Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Fractions and Cross-Canceling. We'll first start with a simple multiply fraction problem. Our steps for multiplying fractions are to multiply the numerators, then the denominators. So if I multiply 7 times 1, and then I multiply 8 times 9, I end up with 7 over 72, or 7 70 seconds. Let's do another example. This time I have 3 elevenths times 4 fifths. I multiply straight across for my numerator as 3 times 4 is 12, and my denominator 11 times 5 is 55. So I get 12 50 fifths. What happens when I have a common factor between my numerator and my denominator and I need to simplify? For that, we're going to look at this as an example. I have 3 tenths times 5 sixths. I'm going to be simplifying by cross canceling here, and I'll show you the advantage of cross canceling versus just multiplying straight across and then trying to simplify. So if I was to do that, I have 3 times 5 because I multiply my numerators over 10 times 6 multiplying my denominators. I end up with 15 for my numerator and 60 for my denominator. It's quite difficult in order for me to find out what the greatest common factor is here because I don't know my times tables through 15. So there is a faster way to do this and it is something that you'll use all through math including high school. So if I look across with my 3 and my 6, I see that they have a common factor of 3. So I can actually cross out this 3 and say 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that's what I'll write up here instead of 3. Down here with this 6, I know 6 divided by 3 is 2, so I would cross it out and write 2. Even looking right here multiplying across, I can see that the problem's much easier. But I'm not quite done simplifying. Across I have 5 and 10 have a common factor of 5. So if I cross out my 5, I get 1 because 5 divided by 5 is 1. If I cross out my 10, I get 2 because 10 divided by 5 is 2. Now I'll multiply these straight across. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 2 is 4. So my answer is 1 fourth. And if I was to simplify 15 sixtieths, it would simplify to 1 fourth. But this way, it's a lot easier to calculate. Let's do another example. This time I have 9 whole times 1 twelfth. Remember, this 1 twelfth is saying that I have cut something like a pie into 12 pieces and I have one of them. Because this has not been cut at all, I could say that that pie is one giant piece. So I have nine whole pies that have not been cut into at all yet. So I could rewrite that as nine over one. Now I'm gonna multiply that by 1 12th. Looking diagonally, I see that nine and 12 have a common factor of three. So I cross out the nine and nine divided by three is three. I cross out my 12 and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So my answer here is going to be 3 fourths. Let's look at some examples with mixed numbers. For a mixed number, it's important that you do not just multiply the whole numbers and then the fractions. You need to convert this first into an improper fraction. Also, it makes a lot of sense to estimate here to find out if your answer is reasonable. I would estimate 3 and 3 fourths as about 4, and 1 and 1 sixths is about 1. So my estimate is 4 times 1, or 4. So my final answer should be close to that. When I convert 3 and 3 fourths, I'm multiplying my denominator and my whole number, so that's 12, and then adding my numerator, which is 15. So I have 15 fourths. For this mixed number, I have 6 times 1, which is 6, and then I add my numerator, which is 7, or 7 sixths. Now I'm ready to multiply. So I'm going to multiply 15 times 7 and 4 times 6. And I'm looking across, and I notice these don't have any common factors diagonally, but these share a 3. It's much easier to factor the 3 out now than to multiply 15 times 7. So 15 divided by 3 is going to give me 5, and 6 divided by 3 is going to give me 2. 
My answer, multiplying my numerators, is 35, and my denominators is 8. So I have 35 eighths. One last step, let's convert it back to a mixed number. So 35 divided by 8 can fit in 4 times, so I have 4 holes, and that's 32, and 35 minus 32 is 3. So my answer is 4 and 3 eighths. One more example, 5 and 2 fifths times 8 and 1 third. I get 5 times 5 is 25 plus 2, so I have 27 fifths here. And then 3 times 8 is 24 plus 1 is 25 thirds. And I went ahead and put my estimate up here. So I'm going to just estimate 5 and 2 fifths is 5 and 8 and 1 thirds is 8. So my estimate's going to be about 40. Now we're ready to multiply straight across. So 27 times 25 for my numerator and 5 times 3 for my denominator. This is a very large problem, so I'm definitely going to be, for my numerator, so I'm definitely going to be trying to cross cancel before I multiply. So of course, across from here, I can see these have a common factor of five and these have a common factor of three. So I'm going to cross out my 27 and 27 divided by three is nine. Three divided by three is one. Here, 25 divided by five is five and five divided by five is one. Now I'm going to multiply my numerators and I get 45. My denominators give me one. And remember, we said that any time that you have cut something into only one piece, you essentially haven't cut it at all. So the answer here is 45 whole. My estimate was 40 and my answer is 45. So that makes sense. So remember, if you're multiplying straight across, you'll multiply numerators then denominators. For simplifying and cross-canceling, you'll factor out diagonally and vertically. And you never multiply mixed numbers. Always convert to improper and use an estimate first. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe for this and other lessons. Until next time!